Here we're being asked if the mean value theorem is applicable for the function x squared minus 1 on the interval from minus 1 to 3. Um, now first of all, let's remind ourselves what the, the mean value theorem says or what its requirements are. Uh, it says if your function is continuous, which means it doesn't have any breaks in it, any asymptotes or any jumps or holes in it, on a closed interval, and it's differentiable on that open interval, then what it guarantees us is, is, is at least one point whose slope uh, specifically at that x value agrees with the average slope over the entire interval. Uh, as you can see in your picture here, if, if this is the average slope between a and b, then there's at least one place here. There's a couple uh, whose instantaneous slopes, whose uh, tangent slopes right here at C matches the average slope over the entire uh, interval. So we really only have two criteria to check, continuity and differentiability. Now uh, for this particular guy, he's a polynomial. He's continuous everywhere. There's no breaks or holes or jumps in this guy. So, um, so yes, he is continuous. Um, uh, specifically on the closed interval minus 1 to 3 is what it asks for. And he's also differentiable. How do I know he's differentiable? Well, I can take his derivative. His derivative, derivative is 2x, uh, specifically on the open interval minus 1 to 3. So is the mean value theorem applicable? Uh, absolutely, yes, it, it is applicable. Now, what you'll typically be asked beyond this is, uh, if it is applicable, if the mean value theorem is applicable, then what was that C that we were guaranteed? There, there was supposed to be some somebody um, whose derivative at C matched the average slope on this interval. Now, what, what would the average slope be? Uh, well, it's rise over run. So we would take f of 3 minus f of 1, negative 1. That gives us the rise divided by 3 minus negative 1. That gives us the run. That's the difference in the y values over the x values. So all we would have to do is take this guy's derivative, which would be 2x. That's the derivative of f. And we would set it equal to, um, now we have to do a little math. Let's see, f of 3, 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 1 makes 8. Uh, minus if you plug in negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, uh, divided by uh, 3 minus negative 1, which is 3 plus 1, that makes 4. If 2x equals 2, then we obviously see that x equals 1. And sure enough, 1 is in this interval from minus 1 to 3. Um, so this is the x value whose slope exactly at 1 agrees with the average slope from minus 1 to 1 for this function. Uh, to help illustrate this, I went ahead and put a graph down. And uh, so here's minus 1 and here's 3. So we can see the average slope between these two guys. But now if we can look, where might be a place whose uh, slope specifically at that x value agrees with that average slope? Well, sure enough, what about, um, what about right here at 1? That looks um, perfectly reasonable that the slope specifically at 1 will match that average slope that you're seeing right here.